Okay, guys. Uh, glad you came, and uh, I'll go over a couple of examples here. Okay, so some some students asked some examples on the weekend, and so I'll go over examples, some examples here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. And then uh, I'll leave you for questions. Okay. So, uh, when a student asks a question on uh, the as one of the additional exercise, additional exercise in triple integral. The first question, actually the first three questions, but uh, I'll go over the first and the second. Here. Okay. So there's a triple integral problem here. Uh, the problem says, I want you to find the volume okay, between z equal to 1 minus x squared over 36 minus y squared over 49 and xy plane. Okay. So that's this question, triple integral question volume. And Let's plot this thing out. Okay. Okay. So this z equal to y minus c is physically you can see now the maximum value for the z is one, right? So it, we already had a very uh, very formal one, so it's like one minus x squared minus y squared. This kind of curve in our lecture. So we call this is basically inverted parabol paraboloid. Right? But this one here is x squared over 36, y squared over 49. So the shape wise is still um, pretty much like that. Okay. So it's an inverted one here. Okay, and inter it'll intersect the xy plane okay, with a certain shape. So the only the, the only difference one is see this one when you have this surface and uh, when you set z equal to zero, basically that's what it looks like when it intersects the xy plane, right? And it's a circle. So this one when you let z equal to zero, so what what do you get? You got one equal this plus this. So that's actually an ellipse. Right, that's actually ellipse. Okay, so that's the difference. So this this bottom curve here, it's basically one equal to x squared over 36, y squared over 49. Okay. So now we're looking for the volume. So looking for the volume and uh, the typical approach, just basically d dv does give you volume here, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, if you remember, okay, in the lecture we said. To look for the volume, you, you, you essentially you can use either this triple integral or you can also use a double integral, right? So using double integral, basically, it, it, what you what you do is you treat this bottom, okay, as a region R, and then this is a function, right? This is the function you are integrating about. So that basically that's a function representing the height, okay, uh, representing the height of this object here. Okay, at the different options. But otherwise, you can also derive things here. Okay, so let's say this is this right here, right? So then you you have a choice uh, of determining the order here. Okay, so let's see if I determine the order to be this. Okay, so never mind the y and x first. If I determine to be the z first, then you go okay from uh, pick a point from the shadow and then go up, right? Okay. And uh, that's basically where you intersect this uh, solid first contact, second contact, give you the z mean and z max. So in this particular case, your z mean is zero, your z max is one minus x squared over 36 minus y squared over 49, right? And then d z dy dx. Okay? Yeah. So just for this integral right here, right? Just for this integral. What do we have? We have a, a double integral here, and then y minus x squared over 36, y squared over 49, and then dy dx, right? So that's basically after the first integral here. Was that clear? Yeah. Okay. So the difficulty basically comes uh, from here. Okay. So now what we have here is we need to determine the limits for the x and the y. Okay, for the x and the y, and x and y limits are based on what? Based on the shadow here. Okay, but this is not a circle. This is an eclipse. Okay, so the sh the limits is not as 
if you use a circle, then what would you do? You basically you can use a polar coordinate, right, to uh, simplify the situation. Okay, but this is a s ellipse, so use the polar coordinates actually won't work. Okay, so in this particular case, okay, uh, you can use Cartesian, but the Cartesian coordinates is a little bit uh, too complicated. Cartesian basically you choose either y direction or x direction first. This is which y direction. Then you draw lines in the y direction, right? Yeah. So you have the the bottom the bottom part and the top part. So the y basically here y equal to positive negative root, okay, uh, 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 seven that here is in it, right? And y minus x squared over 36. So there are two y negative positive. That's y mean and uh, y max, okay? But you can expect to be very complicated because you've got a square root of one minus something there, right? So Cartesian coordinates uh, will turn out to be uh, calculation-wise, it's not, not going to be easy. And in this case here, okay, uh, actually we didn't practice, but we did, we did uh, talk about it in the class. We, we better ch what we do is we better use the so-called change of variables. Okay, change of variables. So, what do we mean by change of variables? Is this one here. Instead of using x and y here, right, you, you wanted to use the polar. That's a change of variable, right? That's a change of variable. But I'm not going to use the polar coordinates r theta. I'm going to use another set of variables. So, this set of variables, what do we do is we do this. We let, okay, we let u equal to uh, x over 6 and v equal to y over 7 or x equal to 6u y equal to 7v okay we do this change of variable okay so let's see if i do this change of variable then what happens okay yeah if i do this change first of all change of variable is not a actually it's not a new thing i mean when you when you learn integrating of a, of a integrating of a single variables Okay, fx dx, right? So what's the technique in general we have been talking about? Substitution technique, right? Substitution technique is basically what happens is you let u equal to certain things about x, okay? Right? For example, okay? For example, if you have a, a 3x plus 1 and <laughs> dx here, okay? So you, what you do is, oh, I can let u equal to 3x plus 1. That's a change variable, right? So it's basically a substitution rule here. So if I do, that's a simple case, that's just a single variable here. But uh, for this case here, okay, let's see. If I do this, okay, <coughs> then uh, number one is, okay, this is the region, right? This is the region here, okay? This is the region here. So basically X and Y satisfy this region, this, this region R, right? This region R. Now if I do this change of variable, I'll substitute X and Y into this region here. So what do we get? Right, we get right. So the U and V will satisfy. Okay, satisfy what? One equal to X equal to six U over thirty-six. Y is seven V over forty-nine. So what does that give us? Give us a circle, right? Give us a circle. So the X and the Y satisfy the ellipse. The chain, after the change of variables, as the u and the v satisfy a circle. So that's that's good, right? We like circle. We don't like ellipse. So if you have this circle now, right? Then the next question is, you know, it's just like you, if you change a variable from r to theta, then instead of dy dx, you're going to have something dr d theta. But there's not just purely dr d theta. There's something bracket in, uh, be, before that, right? So this this equal sign going to here. Okay, this equal sign right here. So now we're going to change this. We're going to change. Uh, uh, we're going to change x and y into u and v now. Okay. So change the x and y into u and v. So what do we got? We got one minus okay, six u over that. So that's basically u squared minus v squared. That's what this one here. And then du and dv. So the only choice, the point, the only problem here is we need to we need to add something in here, right? You know, not just. Uh, a blank one or anything. So what would be this guy right here? That's basically, if you recall in the lecture, how do we get this part? We use so-called what? The determinant of the Jacobian matrix, right? Yeah. 
So what's the Jacobian matrix? Jacobian matrix in this particular case, it's based on basically partial x over partial u, partial x over partial v, partial x over partial y over partial u, partial y over partial v. Okay. So let's see. What's x? x is 6u. So partial x over partial u is 6. And partial x over partial v, 0, because x is not a function of v. And partial y over u, 0. Partial y over v, 7. So that's g, right? That's g. Then the determinant of g, 7, it's what? 42. Okay? Yeah. So then this integral at here, Right, this integral right here becomes okay, an r1 minus u squared minus v squared 42 du dv. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now this integral, no, sorry, I, I wouldn't call this as r anymore. Let's just, just change the name here a little bit here because I use r here, right? So this r is the region for the ellipse. So after change variable here, it's not R anymore. Let's maybe call it uh, R prime, okay? Because after change variable, the region for U and V is not an eclipse. It's what? It's a circle, right? So, so it's slightly different to the region here. So R prime. So R prime is a circle. It's this U squared plus V squared equal to one, okay? Yeah. So you're integrating over this circle, a unicircle right here. Then I guess what we do is we're going to use this what change this to polar coordinates. Okay, so there's two change of variable basically right here. Okay, so then you use change you change this to polar coordinates, which means you're going to have let u equal to cosine theta, v equal to sine theta. Okay, and theta uh, changes uh, sorry r right, and theta changes from zero to pi, and r changes from zero to one. Okay. So 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 1. Okay, so then I substitute this u and v back here, and you got what? 1 minus r squared. And this 42, leave it, du dv, because of this change of variable, you're going to get r dr d theta. Okay? Yeah. So the rest of the work, I think, is uh, basically straightforward, right? Yeah. Okay? So there's this change variable in terms of a uh, uh, impossible region uh, for the integrals here. Okay. Yeah. So this one here, you got you should get the right results. Uh, uh, Twenty one pi. Okay. Yeah. So okay, that's basically the one of the question over there. Any question? Any question? In this one here. Yeah, okay. Okay. So feel free to ask questions, okay? Yeah, if you got uh Okay, this one here is is this. Um usually I, when, when I'm talking this this is actually I I simplify the situation here, but uh if you look at the question you should understand the question. What's like this? This one here. The question asked is, uh, find the volume. Okay, find the volume. Uh, find the volume. For, find the volume between this uh, te te uh, tetrahedron and the three uh, coordinates plane. So here's a tetrahedron. Uh, I wonder if I write it right. Okay. So basically, uh, anyhow, maybe I'll just draw it. Here. This, this, this is you have a sur basically you have a surface here, okay? And this surface is x over a plus y over nine plus z over four equal to one. And we want to find the volume between this surface, okay, and this plane, okay, and uh, the three coordinate planes, okay, in the first octant. Okay, that's basically what happens. The ha the tech the the, the tachyhedron that we were talking about here. So this is the plane here. So the plane will intersect the three coordinate planes by three lines here, right? 
And uh, so technically speaking, I can write down the three lines if I have the plane here. Now, make sure there's, a, there's a variable a at here, okay? There's a variable a. So if I write this line here, what I do is I'll set that equal to zero. So this is x over a, y over nine equal to one. If I set this y equal to zero, this is x over a, and z over four equal to one. And this is going to be y over nine plus z over four equal to nine. So that's the three lines intersected by this plane, right? Okay. And in terms of this vertices at here, okay, so what you do is, let's say this is a line here, this is a line here, right? So for this line here, that's when y equal to zero. For this line here, then z equal to zero. So apparently, okay, for this value, it's x equal to what? A, okay? And for this value, it's y equal to nine, right? Yeah, for this value is z equal to four. So that's the three vertices. And the question asked is, um, at a equal to what value, the volume equal to 10? Okay. So when a equal to what, that value, the volume is 10. Okay. Yeah. So this is actually not a very difficult question, but it might be, um, um, yeah, it turned out to be a little bit uh, uh, complicated in terms of calculation, right? Yeah. So, I mean, when you look at this question here, right, this, it's, you're looking volume, basically it's what? Triple integral, right? If it's triple integral, okay, and you're integrating basically uh, this volume D at here, sandwiched between this plane and the three coordinate planes here, okay? So then, According to this one here, you can use uh, Cartesian coordinates. Okay, Cartesian coordinates basically you determine uh, the orders of the okay, integral. Okay, yeah. so for the z, right, this is the uh, the shadow in the, okay the shadow in the x y plane. Okay, so then draw a vertical lines in the direction of positive z axis. They bump into the zero first. Bumping into the top plane next. The top plane is this, uh, which is y minus x over a minus y over nine multiplied by four. Okay. Hmm. Was that right? No. Why not? Because there's a z over four here. See? Yeah. Okay, so then then it's the y limit. So y limit is you draw a line over here. Okay, you draw a line over here. So you bump into zero first, bump into this next, which is what? Y minus x over a multiplied by nine. Okay. And last is the is the x limit. You sweep this line, find the zero to a. Right. So that's basically the setup. Okay. So you look at this setup. I I, I guess there there's actually really nothing tricky here. But only a trick maybe it just uh, it gets a little bit complicated. Right. So that's that's what came out uh, after the first integral, okay, and then uh, the next integral you you keep going, right? Yeah. So, but you would expect here there will be half y square, but there is a half y square, and then you're going to substitute this term into the half y square. There's something squared, and then there's another one after dx, the one third or something, right? Yeah. So so basically. Uh, it, it, it's a little bit uh, uh, complicated in terms of calculation, but uh, otherwise, scale-wise, there's no tricky things there. Okay, yeah. So um, there is a there is a slightly okay, uh, you know it's a slightly 
better way of uh, simplifying this approach is this uh, we can use this change of variable okay just just very slightly though so let, let's just take a look at this thing here okay so what we do is just like a uh, just like previous case in this case here I'm gonna let okay, I'm gonna let uh, u equal to a sorry I'm gonna let u equal to x over a and v equal to y over what nine and w equal to z over four okay yeah so if you do this then you got basically u plus v plus w equal to one okay so the x y z is a plane and for the variable u v w it's also plane right but this plane may be simpler okay so this plane is basically, I think we, we have dealt with this plane a couple of times here, right? So this plane here is u plus v equal to 1. And if this is corresponding x, y, z, okay? And this is u plus w equal to 1, and v plus w equal to 1, like this, right? So this is like u, v, w, okay? All right, so then you do the same thing. Then, th then this triple integral setup, right? Triple integral setup would be what? The first one is 0 to 1 minus u minus v. The second one here is 0 to 1 minus u. Last one is 0 to... 0 to what? Yeah, 0 to 1, right? 0 to 1. Okay? So fortunately, there's an a not showing up here. However, Okay, you, you're not going to dx, dy, dz anymore. You're going to have a du, dv, dw. So there is a certain something in front of here. And how do I get that? Determinant of the Jacobian matrix. Okay, so determinant Jacobian matrix, this is basically uh, the determinant of this j here. Okay. So the determinant of j is a determinant of the matrix and this is basically partial x over partial u partial x over partial v partial x over partial w okay same thing for the rest so but it's very simple though because x is only a function of u so a here zero 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 nine here zero 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 four here okay yeah so the determinant of this three by three matrix is what 36 a okay because everywhere else is zero yeah so uh, what you do is you basically replace this 36 a and here okay. so there's a showing up here okay yeah. thirty six a so then I, I think this integral is a little bit better right than the uh, this integral here okay and this integral so I will prefer to do this according to that instead of that integral. So the the results of that integral of the, of this integral here is basically six a. Okay. So six a needs to be equal to ten. So which means a is okay, phi over three. Right. So just a sort of a uh, really not additional question, but I don't think in the assignments we practiced this change of variable okay yeah it's it's quite uh, actually it's quite useful technique okay in terms of uh, in the uh, in the probability and statistics there is a basically uh, a distribution function okay uh, for double integral triple integrals and many times you need to apply this change of variables okay in order for the calculation You shouldn't. <laughs> DW? Oh, yes, the DW first, that's right. Good point. Um, yeah, I'm not teaching new things here, but I guess the way when I'm talking this in here, just kind of refresh your mind of the. So, for example, right, what's the procedure of doing triple integral, right? How do you find the limits here? Okay, yeah.
Okay, so let's uh, take a look at an example here, okay? As uh, the Stokes theorem. Uh, in the uh, in the in the review, okay, in the review for the 248, I I think I forgot to mention one thing, but I did have it in the final review notes though. Uh, I forgot to mention one thing, which is a sort of a standalone branch, okay, from everything else, which is what, which is that uh, minimum and maximum, and the constraint optimization problem, okay. So if you recall that when we learn partial derivative, okay. And we, and also after we learned directional derivative, we had a topic which is on the minimum and the maximum of a certain surface, and also the minimum and basically the optimization problem, giving a function which is what you were trying to minimize and giving you a constraint, right? So then, how do you get that minimum or maximum based on this uh, kind of uh, constraint optimization problem, right? We have this uh, formula, so-called what? Lagrange multiplier, right? So uh, it, it is included in the formula sheet. All right. Yeah. So it is included in the formula sheet. Lagrange multiplier. So basically, uh, we only deal with the simpler case function of two variables, right? And uh, uh, essentially, to, to find the means or max, okay, what you do is you think you you solve essentially three equations. Two equations coming from the Lagrange multiplier that equation. The third one is a constraint equation. Okay, the constraints. Right. So uh, that has nothing to do with actually uh, surface integrals or vector integrals. Okay. This it's more or less of a standalone branch here. Uh, in uh, uh, in uh, another mathematic course called optimization, and that's essentially uh, what you're going to deal with in more complicated in general. Cases. Okay. Yeah. So make sure you review according to the lecture note, the review notes. Okay, whatever listed there. Okay, make sure you understand every topic. Now I'll talk about Stokes theorem, but uh, um, I want you to basically when uh, when you when you focus on uh, sort of the not just approach, focus on some of the details of uh, let's say it will involve uh, line integrals, right? And how do we do uh, some of these uh, line integrals, right? So let's take a look at this one first. Okay, so I have a light bulb right here. Okay, so there is a light bulb. Okay, so then. <coughs> The light bulb has a surface, and this surface is bounded by a unit circle over here. Okay. Yeah. And we have a vector field F, which is this. Okay, so we have a pretty scary vector fields here. All right. Yeah. So now what I what I want you to do is I want you to find I want you to find the surface integral. Okay, I want you to find this surface integral. So, <coughs> find this surface integral using Stokes theorem. Okay, assuming that uh, this surface gets okay, so its origin in it up. Okay. Okay, on and up. So, Stokes theorem first. Well, I mean, you have to know Stokes theorem. I might go look, go look, look at the, the formula sheet and then what the uh, 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 Stokes theorem is first. Okay. So this is a Stokes theorem.
Okay, this is still zero. So if the question says find the surface integral using Stoke theorem, basically what it means is, you know, like it doesn't really want you to calculate this guy here, right? It wants to calculate what this one, here, right? Yeah. So in the in the lecture, uh, I think I mostly go the other way. Basically, I have a I have a this equal to this, okay, giving you uh, given given a given a curve, given a surface. I want you to say, okay, find this line integral, right? So in that in that kind of question, instead of calculating line integral, then we calculate the surface integral, right? Yeah. So look at the question. What the question is asking you, right? So of course, it doesn't matter. In the end, you you're gonna get the, what, whatever the value here is, right? Yeah. As long as you get the right one. But however, if you don't use this side, if you stick to this side here, you look at the light bulbs here, and uh, and you have no idea what the surface is, and uh, right, and then it's impossible to calculate this one here. Okay. But however, this surface is bounded by the curve, by the surface C here, so we'll get it to this part here. Okay. Yeah. So number one, you know, you're back to the Stokes theorem. Okay. When you use Stokes theorem, the important thing is the surface S and the curve C has to be oriented compatibly. If the question tells you the surface S is pointing up, okay, is oriented up, then you have to you have to find out what's the direction of the curve C now, right? What would direction curve C? Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, looking from the top, right? So right hand rule, right hand rule. So there, there, the uh, the end hat is up, okay, is this way, okay. And then there are two ways of applying the right hand rule, right? The, the number one, the, use the thumb is direction of the C, the index finger tangent to the surface, and then the end hat, the middle finger is end hat, right? So that's okay, right? And the other way of doing this is, okay, you can draw a little circle right here, okay, at the basic cliff representing the local circulation, and uh, the direction of the circulation satisfy the right hand rule. Basically, that's that's in hat. In hat has to be okay this way here. So that's basically this. This is the cir local circulation. So you look at the bottom here. It's flowing this way. So the curve, the curve C direction should be. Uh, matching this direction of that direction, right? Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. So yeah. Now, there was one comment on the YouTube telling me uh, there were some mistakes in the lecture, but I, I don't think I made a mistake there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Okay, so then you back to this line integral now. So that, let's just think about uh, how do you do line integrals here, okay? Yeah. First of all, C is over here. C is a curve, and uh, I guess uh, number one step is, okay, we need to find out the parametric equation for the C, okay? So for the C parametric equation, because it's curved, and it's so simple. So it's basically, this is a unit circle here. I forgot to tell you, this is a unit circle, all right? So this is R, R is a one. So R, R of T, let me write down the bottom here. So for C, the R of T <coughs> is what? Cosine T, sine T, and the Z component is? Zero. zero. Okay, and zero. So that's C here. Now back to this line integral here. Back to line integral, uh, there are uh, different ways of evaluating line integral. If you look at uh, our lecture, you know, the, the formula sheets, let's see how many different, how many ways. There, there, there's another way, right? There's a way this, the other, the other formula is, uh, <coughs> is C M D X D Y, it's N D Y. Plus P D Z. So basically, M and P, and that's the vector field. Right, so that's another way, another formula of using this one here. Okay. Um, <coughs> but if you don't want to use this formula, if you just directly from here, it's, it's okay. It's the same thing. All right. <coughs> Uh, the, the the reason that uh, we can use this one here, or it doesn't matter. But before we do, let's let's talk about this one here. Okay. This is the vector field F. You are integrating the vector field F. Okay. Dot this dr, and the r is at here. So what do we do? So we'll go coming back to the f at here. Right. This is f here. So what we're going to do? We're going to replace the x, y, z at here. 
with what? With this, right? With this, okay? So, so basically, the f vector, you basically replace the vef, f vector with your this, right? Or, or more specifically, with x of t, y of t, and z of t. Okay, so that's what we're going to you have to replace the f with this. So if I do this, let's see, now this is actually why you shouldn't panic because the z value is zero. So when you replace the zero z over here, look at this. The first term is what? What's the first term? One. So you only left with x of t, and x of t is cosine t, right? And second one here is sine x, y, z. Z is zero, so sine zero, zero. And y is sine t. So you only have this here. Okay? Yeah. And then last one is e to the power of zero, sine of zero. So this whole term is zero. So that's basically, you see now the, the f, which is scary f, but when they come to the integrating or the line integral over the curve, say, it becomes a beautiful things here, right? Yeah. Okay, so then this this equal sign right here, you can now you can substitute. So basically this is your m, this is your n, this is your p, right? M and p. Okay. So you can either dot product using this dot this or using this one. Here it doesn't matter. So but uh, let's see now, right? So what do we have? We have, okay, and then the other thing is, what's the t's range? 0 to 2 pi, okay. So 0 to 2 pi out of here. Then, uh, let's see, dot product. So this dots that. Uh, am I right? F, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, hang on a second. Yeah, so so not 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 this dot this right. What's that? This dot what dot dr. So yeah, let before we do that, let's let's write down dr first. Okay, dr. So what's dr? This is r right here. This is r right. So what's dr? Dr is derivative um, sine uh, cosine derivative is negative sine sine derivative cosine zero and then dt right? dt. Okay. So that's dr. Okay. Then this line integral okay, is this vector dot this vector. Okay. So let's see now what do we have? This is a cosine. So t is going from 0 to 2 pi. Cosine this, negative cos sine this, not that. This positive cos sine plus cosine. T. There, so it turned out to be very easy. So these two cancel each other. There's only cosine t left. Okay, actually, it's end up with a zero. Right. So if it end up with a zero, what does it mean by uh, for this vector field f? Conservative. Conservative. Right. Excellent. So then. You might my wonder is what will be if this is conservative f here. So f is conservative. Okay, f is conservative. If f is a conservative, that means the f must be a gradient vector field del f, right? Must be this. And maybe the question will extend to be so what will be this function f? Right. Yeah. So I mean, this one here is maybe a little bit too complex, but you know, that's basically you need to think about what. So how do you find f again? Right. You have to do a couple of integrals. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, zero times zero. No, this one. Cos t times this term. Sorry. Yeah, last term is zero times zero. No, this one. See, cos t times this one here is cos t sine t cos t one. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, sorry, louder. C. Oh, oh, how do I come up with the parametric equation? Yeah. Yeah, it's a unit circle. Right. So we we had a many exercises before midterms, isn't it? Here's a unit circle. So basically, what's the parametric equation for the unit circle? This is if this is let's say not unit circle. This is a at here, and this is what t. Let's see. What what is the coordinate at here? A cos t. What's the coordinate here? Right? Yeah. Okay, so that's one question there. So the point here is actually not just Stokes theorem, but also uh, I want you to basically uh, understand the process of the line integrals here. Okay? Proper substitutions. Proper substitution. <coughs> okay. So the next one, it uh, I'll ask you a, a, a concept question here. Okay? A concept here. <coughs> here here's what I'm going to do here. Okay? So tell me what's going wrong in it here. So I have a vector field which is continuous, right? And this and then curve C is a simple curve. Okay, so, so everything's good. Okay. And then according to the Stokes theorem, okay, we end up with right, you know, this this is basically the equal sign here is a Stokes theorem. Okay? Yeah. Uh, I guess there's nothing wrong here, right? Yeah, so far so good. Okay. Now, the next thing is, according to divergence theorem, okay, what's divergence theorem? Right? You look at your formula, what's the divergence? So basically, divergence theorem relates a double integral with a triple integral, right? Triple integral. So according to the divergence theorem, okay, D. So this is a vector field over here, right? The okay. divergence theorem basically says it's a del dot, okay, dot that field, okay, this one here. Look at the divergent. Look, look at the formula divergence theorem. So, where is it? Do you have your Do you have your formula here? Yeah, so let me write down the divergence here. Okay. So this is divergence theorem. Okay. This is divergence theorem. So, so basically, see this, this, this here. Here is here's the vector field f. So this f is that del cross this, right? Yeah. And uh, so the divergence of del dot the f. So they basically here's a del dot this bracket here. Was that good? Hmm. I mean, I mean, uh, the way I apply the theorem is okay, right? From here to here. Okay. Yeah. Now, del dot del cross f. So one of the exercises, I think one of the assignments you did, this term actually is always what? Zero. So if it is zero here, and then this whole thing is zero. Right? So what's wrong here? But but you, you can't see that any line integral is a zero, right? So there's something, the conceptually thing, you know, basically, regarding the way you apply this Stokes and 
diverging serial. Basically, we, that's the point here. I'm trying to 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 uh, to let you figure out here, right? Yeah. So often in time, you can't just apply the theorem. You have to understand what's what what is the theorem is talking about here. Okay, what's the definition be behind this? Um, formulas basically. Okay? So for first of all, you know, from here to here, I guess there's arguably there's nothing wrong here. Okay? Yeah. So from here to here. So from here to here, now you have to repeat what's the definition of divergence theorem? It has to be closed uh I'm not a region, closed what? Surface. Surface. Right, has to be closed surface. Okay, so so when you apply this to here, the S right needs to be okay closed one. Okay. So what does that mean when it close? So if S is a closed one, well, th and then 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 coming back to the Stokes now, right? Coming back to Stokes. Stokes is basically saying. The C is what? It's a boundary of a boundary of what? Which one? S. So S is if S is closed, where's the boundary? I know, but if if you're giving you a closed surface S, can you can you tell me what would be the boundary C? <laughs> this is basically sort of topology. Now. If I have a let's say sphere. So, so I mean, if you have a half sphere, if I have a half sphere, what would be the C? The circle here, right? But if I have a whole sphere, where, 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 where would that C be? It, it, it's basically what? The surface is not a curve, C. When you have a closed surface, there is actually no curve C anymore, right? Okay, yeah. So if there's no curve C, basically the C is essentially a zero. So that's why this becomes a zero. Okay. Okay. So to the point here is when you use the theorem. Okay, you gotta understand what the theorem is telling you. When you know when would you apply the theorem here? Okay. So uh, it, it's not like always from here to here is true, because that's only when S is a closer surface. Okay. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if you recall that when you go from here to here, there's one more thing. The S is oriented outward. Okay. Yeah. Was that good? So <coughs> read when you read the formula, huh? Read the formula. Understand the the the, the wording okay, behind each one of the formula there. So when S is a closed, so C is basically zero. There's no C. There's no bound. Okay, there's no bound. Or in other words, S doesn't <coughs> doesn't have a boundary. Okay, so S doesn't have a boundary. All right. Okay, so so those are basically a couple examples um, I uh, I was thinking of last night. So they're not necessarily going to be on the exam, okay? So the exam is going to be different for sure. Uh, but to give you a way of thinking of the, you know basically different uh, uh, different things. Uh, this just one second here. Yeah. Oh, I don't have a piece of paper with me. There, anyway, never mind. Yeah. So, any questions? Yeah. Uh, so, 246. We uh, we we don't have. A, we still have a pretty long way to go. So, um, I I don't think I'm gonna have another exam jam anymore. Uh, but uh, uh, feel free to ask questions. though, huh? Come into the office. Yeah. Uh, for the 2:48, uh, so for the rest of the time, from two, up to 12 o'clock, if uh, you still got questions, so I'll be around here, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah.